Well, hello there, everybody. You join me, Mid Transit, as we go to acquire the Fem 37 AT. So we are in the reactor zone. Got this map go? Yep. It's very sinister sounding in the reactor zone. Far more dangerous than the danger zone. And uh, yeah, so we've got to go and get the Fem 37 AT and deliver it to the MPP parking lot, which I presume means nuclear power plant. And that means actually traversing into the third map already of Iro Hills. Uh, uh, ordinarily, I would, you know, go map by map, but as there are four, and there aren't many tasks per map, and there are a lot of contracts, I think I need to be a bit more fluid in how I'm approaching everything. So I'll be swapping back and forward in the maps, and every once in a while I'll throw in uh, an, ex uh, an exploration style uh, endeavor to, you know, catch up on the things I, I haven't seen, you know, the watchtowers and grades and whatnot. So, uh, as I've got a bit of a slow drive ahead of me, I will catch you on the gateway to a viral hill. Okay, so here we are just making our way to the gateway. As a refresher, if you're unaware or you, if you're only here for, you know, where to find the fem, you drive from Pine Line Bay. Take a right out of the garage, follow this road to the northeast, into the reactive zone. And then through the reactive zone, follow the road heading, well, just stay on the paved road until you get to this little area. So, you know, if you've gone to the nuclear power plant, you've gone too far, take a left through there, you cross over the railway line, over the river, and then down here into Viral Hills. Okay, so we're close enough that we can actually see where the truck is, but you can see there's a bridge ahead. There's a detour and the truck is below us, so we're going to head down the detour. Stick the high gear in. And, uh, I'm hoping we just find it sitting there. Or is it, is it going to be like the Derry Special where it's like upside down or something crazy? It would be annoying because it's huge. Oh dear, all right, come on. So there's some bridge construction going on. Right, let's get down this away. I can't actually see it. There it is. Oh, it's got some cargo in it. Huh. I wouldn't, oh, that's reverse. That is not the correct gear. I can see a bridge being built, but I can't see any cranes. Um, ooh. Okay, right. What I'm going to do first is reverse it. Because it's got a little barrier ahead of it. It's just going to help to uh, get out of the area. I'm still reversing. So this should uh, actually be very straightforward. Where, you know, it, it's intact. It seems like it's working. It's probably got fuel. Uh, let's double, double, let's double C. Let's double check. Ah, it's out of fuel. Well, not anymore, it isn't. Well, this should make things a lot easier. All right. As with the Dan, this thing is six-wheel drive. So we've just got to, well, maneuver it out of here, really. But it's alright, because the Dan is an agile beast. Right? Right? Nah, just kidding. Oh, that's another, quite a tight turn. Oh, it's quite bouncy. Oops, sorry. Sorry. Pardon me. Excuse me. Come on now. Just this... Uh, we're getting a bit of resistance, obviously, because the truck can only turn so far, and it wants... You know, it's easy for it to go forwards. 
go back to auto, we might get the FEM to actually output a bit more power. Right, there we go. That's the difficult bit done, really. Some tight turns. I've got a tree root stuck to me. I'm... I'm burying myself. Right, let's get a let's get ahead. Come on. There we go. See this is the issue with towing a vehicle. You can see the rear wheels are going. They're the, they're driving. So it's all wheel drive isn't engaged, which you know makes things a bit harder. <laughs> But, all in all, it shouldn't be too bad. And it looks like, you know, we've got free, free cargo, woo! Although, ideally, I would like to get them out of there. Just to basically keep them in the reactive zone map for whenever they might be needed. I don't think we've ever unlocked a truck before that has cargo in it like this. It's normally empty or just completely damaged. Let's see, am I gonna... No, I'm not gonna manage high gear, am I? Don't be... No, just... You're such a silly boy sometimes. Alright, low plus it is. Keep that momentum going. So, yeah. I'm gonna go forward, turn right, head back up to the main road, go through the gateway, and then it's, you know, just getting it across the river into the nuclear plant. That, that's all it is. You don't need to unlock any gateways, do any prerequisite missions. Just turn up, tow it, job done. Obviously, though, you're going to need a big vehicle to do so, because it's a monster. And I'm going to enjoy using it very much. This thing is an absolute beast. If you didn't see, I did test this in a moor um, just, be just before Christmas or New Year or something. And oh man. So I had that with a ramped flatbed trailer towing another femme that also had a trailer. And oh, yeah, smashing it. We had some difficulties because of some bridges with holes in them, but, you know, I was shifting a whole, a whole contract with the stuff in one go. It was, it was beautiful. Alright, so from here it is just as simple as crossing the river, up to the main road, and there. And I think I've just caused some damage. Alright, high gear in, so we get to the river. Honestly, what else did we do with this thing when testing it? Oh, we took it to Maine and uh, we put it in the river and it would just, nothing could stop it. Because it's just so tall um, and powerful, yeah, it, it just, it drove against the current without breaking a sweat. It eliminated the, the need for roads. Where it was going, it didn't need roads. I think I even went to a bit of the map I'd never even been to before. Just because it could. Right, so the issue, um, yeah, because it doesn't have all-wheel driving gauge because it's being towed, to get it over rises is quite difficult. Uh, oh, I need to turn left. It would be nice uh, as a feature if, you know, when you hitched up, you could determine which of that truck's settings were enabled or not enabled. You know, if you wanted to put it into low gear with diff lock, with all wheel drive on, then, you know, if you were driving a truck with the same arrangement, you'd be driving equally rather than, you know, I mean, this isn't, particularly realistic. At least if you could set the gear, it would be like somebody else was in there while you were towing them. Come on now, we got this. Yeah, low, low plus is pro probably just the best gear to carry on with. 
especially with a bit of uphill to go to go on. Swap the tires up um, and lighten the load a bit, and the dam seems to be for be performing a bit better, although it's not exactly been rigorous, rigorously stress tested. Just a bit noticeably a bit better for the, this particular journey. So following this, what we're going to do is the the two ferry missions. Uh, just so I don't have to keep driving across the map. Um, it'll also make spreading out the generator trailers much easier. So, oddly, um, it's going to be easier. This feels a bit backwards. It's going to be easier to do a few contracts first and then the tasks. Which, for, for me, is normally the other way around because, you know, the build of bridges, the removal of roadblocks. But because you need access to the uh, the generators for some of the cargo and the some of the cargo requirements for the tasks the three medium banks each that's a lot so I don't want to spend my time going back and forward I'm gonna create the optimal route so I'm gonna do some of the contracts first whoa crazy times what in the world is he thinking he's got insane no, no. Um, and then after this one I might grab the mission to get the rock grinder which is a generic scout that looks a bit like an, an old land rover kind of yeah that way you know both vehicle acquisition missions are done all right but we're nearly there oh look at that suspension travel on the fem oh it's beautiful it's beautiful so if you haven't realized, it uh, it has an articulated frame rather than ordinary steering. So it drives like the Cat 745C, for example, or the Azov Antarctic, which some people like it, some people don't like it. I mean, it's just, um, it's just a matter of getting used to it. I mean, I'm fine with it. Just the one thing you've got to be aware of is the articulation point will deflect to the point of least resistance so if you're you know you're hanging over an edge or something it's gonna go that way because there's nothing to stop it so you want to avoid those kinds of situations well we're nearly there so on the down are these two drums are they are they an air filter I don't really see what they're connected to they're just on top I guess that's the engine compartment in the middle, but there's just so much other stuff. There's a lot that's just behind the cab. It's a very unique design. Choose my words carefully. You know, as opposed to the Femme, which is a very modern, modern design with monster truck wheels. Uh, yeah, there's normally a bit more security when driving up to a nuclear power station. You know, police checks, background checks, criminal checks. Uh, now, apparently, in North Carolina, you can just drive into them. Uh, I'm sure in reality that's not the case. Or if North Carolina even has any nuclear power stations. I will have to double check that and I will report back. But, um, oh yeah, I mean, we are in auto. We're as, we're as fast as we're going. Don't worry, we're not going to break the speed limit. Oh, we might, no, we're nearly at, this is probably, it feels like miles an hour considering we're nearly doing 20. 20 kph is very slow. All right, hard left. And right, so I might tip it over to get the cargo out and then uh, hit that old recover button. Oh wow, huge shock, don't worry, we've, we've put a tiny objective box in. Ooh, 
Rightio. We are not doing boiling hot. Right, I'm going to get the cargo out of there. I know I need the concrete slab. Um, wait, what? Wait, does this... Oh, it does have witch points in the middle. What? So I don't want to just... Um, what? I don't want to just hit recover in case it deletes the cargo. Because it's on the truck. That, well, that's not going to work doing it from there, is it? Although, will the Dan actually be able to tip it over? This is the question that drives us. Wait, 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 wait. Right. Okay. This, the left point, nothing. The right point to two. They're the same distance. I will never understand the winch system. Ah, it's too big. Or maybe if I just reverse. There we go. Oh no, don't go too far. Oh, now I get all the winch points. Wow. Back onto its wheels easily enough. Anywho, right, let's get the fem back to the garage. Okay, we're suited and booted in the fem. Although I didn't do much actual customization, I just upgraded everything and then left. Um, so, correction, the truck is all-wheel drive, always on. So, it just looks like the front wheels weren't actually doing anything when, um, when the little, 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 uh, when I was towing it. So, it's just diff lock on a toggle, so no high gear diff lock, which I'm, I'm fine with, to be honest. Well, I was saying that. Because all the wheels only drive forwards, they don't have to steer and drive. Surely it would make sense for diff lock to be always on. Because your steering is done by the hydraulics in the f after the first quarter of the truck. But I'm I, I'm not a truck engineer or the, or developing a game for balance reasons. But whatever. So we're doing the little uh, eastbound ferry. So we've got a bit of a drive, but we're heading into the northwest of. I was calling it Pipeline Bay, but it's not. It's Pine Line, uh, whatever that's supposed to mean. Pipeline's not really quite fitted for Snow Runner. And then we've got to pick up some concrete slabs. So I've got the cargo space for that. And we're going to take them to the Eastfield docks. Once we've done that, we're going to grab ourselves two trailers. One generator trailer and one ramped flatbed. Because the following mission, westbound docks, I believe requires us like four. Um, what's four? What's it? Um, what are they called? <laughs> what are they called? Ca cargo cabins. Cabins things. Cabins is. So I've got a, a reef rack just in case, because you never know. Obviously there is one of these already in the truck, but you know, I can I can go and get it whenever. All I need is a crane. With the metal beams, they will not be forgotten. They'll just be used elsewhere. So it's a bit of a drive now, so uh I'll see you in the chunky bits. We'll see how this thing performs. All right, we're way, way into the mucky stuff. You know, you've seen the other route plenty of times. This is, uh, this is a bit more of a test. It isn't just, you know, like nice then bog, then nice then bog. It's just a, a consistent, not nice. 
I don't know, it's not too, it's not too bad. It's rough for uh, towing a trailer and things. It took me in the law for a while to get through this section. But the uh, the one thing you have to watch out with the fem is it's when it gets deeper, it's quite easy for the fuel consumption to head north of 30 liters per minute. So that's where you need to reassess whether or not you're in the right gear, switching it into low, kicking in the uh, the diff lock just to make the truck's life um, easier. There's less strain. You know, the engine doesn't have to work as much then, which saves you fuel in the long run. Oh, that was uh, that was the reactive steering. Oh god, it's a bit squirrely at the minute. You've got to be on your toes. You cannot drive this thing while not really paying attention, because it will go so wrong. But yeah, it's a it's a fine old thing. Not sure why it jerked to the left then. Though I do wish um, it just, when you did the steering, that it just held that position. So I'm constantly having to essentially wiggle. Wiggle the steering just to get it to drive in a straight line at the minute. This is the, one of those situations where it wants to tip to the left because that's the easier way out. I'm going to need diff lock right hand down, and there we go. The diff lock helps there because it forces the wheels to drive at the same speed, so you're not going to get any additional rotation from the other directions. I did find, yeah, it is my, my one issue is that the steering is a bit too sensitive for this truck, so having to start realign and then set off again, which is a bit of a momentum breaker. You know, it's fine if the corner needs it, like this, but when it when the road is only deviating a little bit, just want a little bit of steering input you've, you've got to just take the edge off a bit but you know it's it's getting through oh, what the, it's getting through without really having to stop I mean because the ground clearance is just next level there aren't going to be many situations that uh, cause, you know, the fuel tank or the bottom of the chassis to be touching mud or touching snow. Oh, that wrangled round. I'm quite surprised actually, given that the low completion level of the, the docks that you can see from the map, I'm surprised it only requires uh, two concrete slabs. Yeah, the other side seems finished, but needs you know, four cabins. Twice as much cargo. Why doesn't this side need four cabins? Who knows? Not that I'm saying I should just deliver more cargo on purpose, but, you know. You know. We're going strong, just when we need to. Switching down into low. So it will hold high gear pretty well, in the same way that Kenworth 963 does. There we go. Eastfield! Didn't even going to auto now. Two thirds of the tank gone. Not too shabs. Yeah, I'll buy a, well, haha, <laughs> not really buy, but uh, I'll grab a refueling trailer and get rid of that, get a generator and wrap, a ramped flatbed. I'm going to try and put the generator trailer onto the ramped flatbed 
to make it easier to move. Alright, let's get down here. And hey presto. Unload. Cool beans. Oh, you still can't go across. Oh. So, because I mean, look, it's 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 pretty much there. So right into Pine Line Bay once again. Um, oh man, I, I westbound ferry. So we need to go to the Westfield docks and to the port's drop-off area, deliver four cargo containers, which gives us access to Gateway. So. We're going to be heading through that way anyway. So my plan's a bit scuppered, actually. I thought I was going to be able to cross here and just go straight across there. Nope, I'm going to have to go all the way around. Well, that's going to be... That's going to be a drive. Right, well, as mentioned, I'm going to set up for the next part of this. So I will catch you. Uno momento. Okay, so we're loaded up. We used the nearby loaf of bread to tow the generator onto the trailer so we could lock it down. It was a bit too fiddly and awkward to do it because this is such a big truck and the way it's steering works, but we've got it like this. So instead of towing two trailers and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven axles through the mud, we're only towing three. Boop, boop. So. What we're doing now, with this very goofy looking load, is we are going to head to the north east corner of the map, where the Cat 770 trailer can be found. And there we, that's that's where you make the, the cabins or containers, but you know, whatever they hold them for. So that's what that trailer is going there for. So I can load it with all four of those that are required, then head to Westfield Docks. Um, it's a bit naughty, really, of the game to sort of say, oh, go to the Westfield Docks. Oh yeah, and then deliver all these bits of cargo further than what the docks are. Oh man, that was quite the camber. Because if you, you don't realize or quite look ahead as to what you're doing you're like oh I'm just driven all this way for and now I have to go all the way back so that's why it sort of pays not to just hit recover all the time sometimes it's nice to leave a truck out in the wild because you never know when you might get one of these go to X type uh, objectives then you can just pop there and be like boom done so I've got the the pike and the Azov 6 near the docks you know they're at the bridge oh my days this trailer this is gonna end up falling off twice already I've looked back and the angle that that thing is leaning over I'm su well I'm surprised it went on there so smoothly to be honest it rolled on there quite well. Being towed by the loaf of all things, I wasn't sure it was even going to be able to budge it, but I suppose because I was on a road, it was made a bit easier. So I'm just, I'm just taking it easy because this is a bit of a cambered corner for this type of cargo, and I don't want to pull it at full speed and end up ripping it, ripping it off there. But if you remember, this is where we've previously been stuck. Uh, this is what the Fen makes of this area. Although, I did sink. Uh, <laughs> but it hasn't stopped. Oh, the angle. The glorious angle. Seems to be going. Ooh. 
I am genuinely surprised it's, it's it hasn't um, unpacked and, and tipped off. I really am, honestly. Right. Got a little bit further to go, but I mean, it's, it's night and day difference compared to even the bike, which has good mud tires. Oh, it's going again. Maybe I just need to slow down a bit. Oh dear. Um, I'm just gonna detach that because I don't want to take the trailer through that section because it will go over. So I'm just gonna adjust myself. I'm essentially, I'm checking myself before I wreck myself. Just go gently. Oh, look at that. When did the uh, ramp flatbed trailer get so stiff? There's just zero suspension travel. It seems that it's, uh, if you, that's, okay, it still hasn't fallen off, but what is, uh, it's not like I'm even pulling it at an oblique angle, it's just like, nah, I fall over now. But again, that was surely past the threshold of, uh, tipping. Uh, oh, which way do I? I can't quite see where I'm going. I just want to just want to keep an eye on the trailer a bit more. Oh no, turn left. There we go. When you got this many articulation points and wheels on the ground, anything could happen. Oh no, oh no no. No, I wanna be more more on the left. This is I'm not even on that section and it's already It's already tipping. Alright, safety line deployed. Just just make it tort every so often. Oh I've missed the turn. We're nearly at the road. The road is just up that uh, embankment there. Oh. Risky business. Oh, the challenge isn't over yet. It's curvy, rocky, goodness times. This is where this is where it tips off and it rolls down there into the river. Oh, hey, we made it to the road. Absolutely smashed it. Although I shouldn't celebrate too too soon. You know, we haven't actually got the uh, the cargo production area yet. Of course, if you're just like in normal or hard mode, putting a generator in each location is going to be very expensive. I mean, at least in, in normal mode, you can sell them afterwards, but in hard, you can't sell trailers. And you've got to pay to refuel them. It's, this is a brutal map for economy for hard mode. Especially, you know, those logging missions, they're not paying out the most. Right, I've got a fairly small area with which to... I've got to get that contain that thing to there. Right. Uh, unpack. I'm just going to have to drag it straight off the front. Just to get it free. 
Because I've also got to switch the damn thing on. Right, you're there. Right, you're now on. Oh, I'm, I'm, ooh, I'm quite large. Uh, oh, oh no. Alright, full lock to the right. And then full lock to the left. Right, and as we're rolling backwards, we'll just check four cargo containers, not cabins. See if we have any in here. Ah, we have cabins in there, right? Right, so I need to... <laughs> this yard is not big enough for this truck and a trailer. Right, into there. Give it some luck. Oh. Where do I get containers from? Right, I'm going to have to do the pike bit, this explore bit first. Oh, I see. Right, so I've done the next, I've done that bit. So I need a crane. Sorry, I misread what was required. Um, I thought you could get cargo containers here, although it does say cabin production warehouse. So I should read more. So apologies for that. So I'm going to have to drive my fem all the way over here and uh, ready a truck with a crane. Okay, down at the docks, there's the uh, the bike or the crocodile, whichever. I think it's the bike. I'm just going to keep getting it wrong. We are at the docky docks. Is there much of a turning around place? Not really, which means I'm going to have to try and reverse this trailer down the slipway. Wonderful. Right, so we're going to get ourselves straight. Oh, and the further away I go, the harder it's going to be to keep it straight. Right, here we go, it's nothing. Oh, I'm giving the FEMS significant adjustments to steering. Oh, man. Um, do I want it to... Oh, basically the dolly is, uh, is stuck. So all I can do right now is go backwards. Which, you know, it works. It's not as, you could say, legitimate as, uh, you know, actually doing it properly. Like, at this point, I can straighten up and just let it roll down the hill. Because it should go down straight. It still isn't. Oh god, it's going to end up going off the quayside. Where am I going to put the crane for loading? Right, straighten up again. And uh, that'll do there. So you you can you can have a crane on this truck with a but only with a three slot, either flatbed or sideboard bed. So now I have to bring a crane here. I think what I might use actually get some use out of it this time. Oh no, should I use the GMC? The Brigadier. Yeah, right. I'm going to get a crane on this. So I learned that you can't have the heavy crane or the log carrier add-on with any of the uh, mudguard attachments for the rear wheels. Which I find is a bit weird. Why don't they adjust the, the truck accordingly? <laughs> Anywho, yeah. I'm going to get to the docks as quickly as I can so we can load up on the next bit and continue on our journey. Well, that was a fairly straightforward drive. So it's the GMC Brigadier with URD 2 tyres and 
Only, well, a couple of instances that I have to actually go into lower range and get the diplock. Apart from that, yeah, flew through the mud. Easy pickings. Right, so we're just going to slot ourselves in here and get craning. So I thought with, uh, with the things being so spread out, I thought I would use a larger crane. In a, and of course, the slightest bit of collision causes the cargo to spin like mad. Right, let's try and get that straight. Stop rotating. Stop rotating like there's nothing inside. I mean, the, from the way it moves around, yeah, there is nothing inside. But All right, let's get number two. Let's get it lifted properly this time. Straight up on the wire. Then once it's off the ground, Ooh, that's a bit too high. Lower down into position. Stop spinning. Nope, nope, go the other way. Uh, there's number two, right, where's the third? Which way around? Ooh, counterweight just slapping against the cargo there. Ooh, um, okay, I'm a bit too close to the truck. Hoist and rotate. And last but not least, the single fish in the water. Oh, it's gone. Last piece in, and then it's just a nice, easy, easy trundle. Come on. That's not quite in position, is it? Certainly easier than the... Uh, the crane stuff I was doing in Tamir on the no-wheel drive playthrough. Why is it sticking so much? Oh, because it's in a it's at a very odd angle. There we go, nice and straight. Wonderful stuff. Right into the fem and full pack. Nice. Probably shouldn't have just immediately taken the handbrake off as the front of the truck was on the ramp. But now it's to the port's drop-off area. Where I assume these will have to be checked by customs before being shipped off to who knows where. Uh, how do I get back? Can I, can I go left? Not really. Sorry for uh, disturbing everybody's rest. I'm surprised car alarms aren't going off. Right. Speedy left-hander. And then we'll do another one. Whip it real good around this corner. Double articulation. There we go. Oh, this looks this looks professional AF. This huge industrial port, this massive truck, all this cargo. Yeah. So we don't actually have a container trailer. Which would I think would be nice. A four slot container trailer. For oversized cargo, drilling cargo, and these. I think that would work work quite well. I mean, why not? They have more useless trailers in the game, so so why not put something like that in? Throughout the game, you move enough containers that it would be warranted. Right, so it's the drop-off point. Hmm. Is it this first left? I hope so. It's just, yep, yeah, it is. Sweet. And then the pickup is on the other side. Okay, right. One, two, three, four. 
So that's only 7,000. So by the time you've wasted your money like I did on a generator trailer. Right, does that mean... Yes, we can cross now. Yeah, yeah, everybody liked that. Okay, now, next is Vice Like Grip. This is the mission to unlock the Rock Grinder Scout. So we've got to deliver some metal beams to where the scout currently is located and then deliver the scout to one location and the prototype exploration trailer, which I definitely didn't commandeer, uh, to another location. But luckily, since we have opened up the, the, the ferry crossing to get across the map, it's not going to take that long. So, woohoo! So, we're using the Azov, there's this nearby... Uh, we've been past it a couple of times, just this side bed trailer, so we're going to use that, obviously. There's no point in me really dragging along a five-slot trailer for one metal beam, when I'm more than capable of just hefting this trailer around. Plus, it means I could leave this near the garage for another truck to use. So we're just coming up to the metal works now. We've still got, you can just see it over the wall there, we've still got the bore. So we'll need to jump into that to switch on the, uh, the generator itself. That way we can actually spend fuel to make the car go. It's amazing that even though the power lines are coming in, that this plant actually needs an external source uh, of energy to make steel. And the fact that it can all be done from uh, a container sized generator is it's a bit weird. So, you know, you hooked into the grid, what do you need a generator for? But anyways, right. Let's get into this, jump in the four. Turn on the generator. So we wanna make, huh, no energy in the zone. What are you talking about? Why is it not working? Okay, let's try getting it back in the zone. I heard it beep initially. It's broken. Right, I'm gonna reload the game. Okay, there we go. It looks like it's working this time. It's chucking out some steam. Hey, right. Get that loaded in. So, just to show you what we're doing, we've got to travel north back across the map to here. So, deliver to either side. So, we're going to approach from this side. And then take the rock grinder. This is in geodetic guidance. And take the rock grinder to the office parking lot. And then take the prototype exploration unit, which is there. It's not because it spawns there, it's because I've left it there. Uh, take that to the workshop, which is here. But luckily, we can use the ferry. Woo -woo. Right, so. I'm going to get a shift on, so you'll see me about here. Well, here we are, diverging from the main road at last. Again, a simple drive, really. It's, you know. It's when it's mostly road and you're just lugging only a few tons of cargo. It's for something like this, it's, it's not much trouble at all. But now we're heading up into the hills towards the landslide site. Where, yeah, they're going to use metal beams to, to fix it. Uh, let me just double check directions. Oh yeah, it's keep to the left. Logist, uh, logical solution is the triple wooden blank nonsense. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Right, so I mean uh, even you know, I always say where well, you can avoid just dragging stuff behind you. As of six does not care. Does not care. Just you know, it's one of the heaviest cargoes you can have there. It'd probably be a different story if I was using the gooseneck. Um, tracks of low loader trailer, but I'm not. So, woo. 
So we're just going to be able to stick it in high gear and and cruise, really. And then we'll cruise across to deliver the, the rock grinder to, what is it, there's like a little office we've got to go to. But I'm very much enjoying these new tyres on this truck. It's like breathing fresh life into it. So you can, uh, you can, you can better tweak. You can better tweak it. Right, come on. We're not going up there, are we? Keep left, and then go right. I still need to invest in that elastic band just to, essentially just to depress the trigger for me. Because <laughs> I've been driving for nearly two hours. So, understandably, my finger is getting a bit worn out. Maybe I'll swap, I'll swap to my index finger. Right, nearly there. I'm assuming this is what's gonna clear the way. It's one of these where you know you can deliver to either side, unlike that one in main cursor. Is, is there? Oh yeah, there is a, a rock slide, a rock block. Ta-da! I'm not going to leave the trailer up here. The MTB eight one zero six. Oh, succinct. Right, we're gonna grab it by the rear. I was wondering actually whether or not to get the ramped evacuator platform just to put it on that. I still might do because I was planning on leaving this trailer near the garage. Uh, oh, although I'm not really near the garage. Oh well. May mayhaps I will leave this trailer just by the junction where we get back to the main road and I'll just I'll just tell the rock grinder behind me makes no difference really compared to the Azov the rock grinder is nothing more than a gentle paperweight and if I leave the trailer in a position where it can be hitched from either direction Although the rock grinder is just behind it, so it's going to get a bit of, a bit of a pull. No, nope, don't. Ah, uh, well, it's going to hit the back of it. Oh no, we've gone around. That's fine. Now it looks in good nick now, but it probably won't be by the time I get there. Why has it got the infinity symbol on the bonnet? Oh, it doesn't have a snorkel. Oh, the Azov's barely trying at this point. Oh, hold on. I'm not at the main road, am I? I felt it didn't look like normal. Oh, I'm too far gone now. Oh well, looks like I am abandoning the trailer in the middle of nowhere. So I'll sort it out in my own time. I was going down the hill thinking, I've... I've not... I don't, I don't know this place. It's going full Gandalf. Right, climb, climb, climb. So, oh, oh, it's just a, an office parking lot. Or a car park, as we would call it in Britain. It's a place where you store vehicles. Right, so, we're gonna turn right, and then, as soon as we're on the main road, we'll turn left. Easy as that. Right, so it's gonna be a swampy cruise. So I think I'll probably just finish off uh, by using this truck. There's no point me really switching to the law just to lug the uh, the small trailer although actually the loaf needs a bit of fuel so I could pinch the fuel out of the radar trailer and do it that way anyway but I mean for the most part 
my fuel is pretty much free. Apart from fuel stations, well, that's a new game plus setting I, me I messed up. I messed up, even. Uh, because the default isn't free fuel, which is strange. Oh, wow, actually I had to use uh, Law Plus. There we go, back into cruising mode. Cruising for the bruising. So I don't know how many... So typically, it, previously, um, typically previously, in the past, before, I'm just going to start this sentence with all these different tense terms, the, uh, the Let's Play series have, have taken between about 16 to 18 episodes of, of varying lengths. Uh, it depends how much I actually want to do in each one or how much footage has to be cut out. So far, I'm at um, a time of recording, I'm at about six hours worth of actual gameplay. Of course, it's not six hours of YouTube videos because some of that would be really boring. Uh, and I don't, you know, it's, if I wanted to do it that way, I'd just live stream it. And instead, I cut out the, the routes where I'm just going back and forward through the same route because I can't imagine that's too thrilling to watch. Uh, but yeah, so it's cut down to work. What are we going to be at? Actually, about three hours, so 50% is cut. We'll just get through this section. Ooh. It's a bit deeper. It's still could be worse. We are throwing up a little bit of material. Seems like the rock grinder was acting as a bit of a wake. Look how deep it is. I mean, it's no problem for the fan, but we're not the fan. Right, let's get that closer. And back into high. Bingo! Ah, there's the delivery icon just popping into view now. Of course, this mission does unlock the rock grinder for us. So again, a nice simple one. I don't think there's actually a prerequisite for it. It's just in something geodetics, um, which is not not the right term. It's not the yeah. It's, no, geodetics is to do with the navigation. Right. Come on. Oh, it's, it's quite deep again, so we'll just we'll go ahead and then we'll pull it forward. What are we struggling with? Is it the front bumper? I'm not sure. Whatever it is, it's very wet. So we've, yeah, we've just scored a track straight through. That's clearly not what I wanted. Look around for mission critical objectives. Game. I don't have to worry about putting the handbrake on or accelerated when uh, moving something so small. Oh, I might have been able to roll forward a bit, but I guess not. Back onto dry land. Bring it in. Trip plays catch up. Oh, 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 oh. Rocks, rocks, rocks. Not that I'm really going fast enough to cause any damage. That's another, that's another, um, win for the, the, the speed of the vehicle. You're never actually going fast enough to cause any significant damage. You know, most damage comes from speed. Pure and simple. You know, you drive the Tager around in the Drownlands, all the twigs and stuff. 
Oh my god, the suspension. You're lighting up the wheels in suspension. Like it's bonfire night. Or 4th of July. Wherever, whenever you use a lot of fireworks. This, it's, it's not capable of speed. Therefore, no speed damage. Look at that. SnowRunner life hack. How small is this going to look next to the fem? This the rock grinder that is, not the uh, not the Azov. Smashing job, smashing. There we are. We're pretty much home free. Uh, see, it's got a short wheelbase. It might be quite agile. Oh, it's not an infinity symbol. It's like two magnets being pushed together. Oh no, the, the bread is... Oh yeah. Forgot about that. The bread is on its side. Oh, look at all that rubbish. Where are the bin men? Right, hard left. This car's got uh, new hydraulics. The way it's hopping around there. And am I going to get in without hitting the gate? I am. Damn. Right, deliver the prototype exploration unit, which by this point surely is not a prototype. Oh, square cornered roads. Blech. Was this a driving lesson? Alright, let's uh do I do I have this mission? Oh, it's to take vehicles but oh we get those from across the river. Ha <laughs> Alright, let's go find the well, why have you built square corners? I know just confusing. Are people not tempted to park on the outside of the corner? Oh, look at these nice gardens. Right, little laugh. Let's sort you out. There we go. Well, I didn't think the engine was going to start then. Right, can we get to the trailer before we run out of fuel? I mean, this... There's fuel on the roof. There's also a scout fuel trailer in the substation area. But it's whether or not I can actually get there with just eight liters left. Maybe not. Ah! Oh dear. I've got one minute of driving time. Oh no, rough ground. This is going to increase my fuel drainage. Ah. I'm really sorry, I don't know what that tune was. I, I started almost going into Pirates of the Caribbean, then remembered that you can't really do that without risking... Um, copyright infringement claims uh, so I didn't <laughs> I changed it to something much worse uh, right refuel yeah that's me oh look at that we can kick the wheel it's like an old Honda Civic we just want more fuel out of you Thank you very much. Oh, that's low gear. Aya. This trailer does affect uh, Lux's performance quite considerably when off road, but luckily we don't have to go off road. Maybe I'll use the rock grinder for that race. See how it does. 
Okay, we're... Oh, sugar, I've missed it. Oh. I should have turned right. Oh, well. So I've got to go around the block. You melon. Right. I should remember not to turn too vigorously. Because if I, if I catch the curbs too much at speed, the wheels will just bite into the side of them and I'll roll over. Which wouldn't be that bad because it would look good. Right, let's see. I'm assuming the ferry is going to cost the same as the British Columbia one. Oh, 750. That seems quite expensive. Oh dear. Oh yeah, I should move that crane. Oh my. Okay. We are here and wrapping up. So I want to thank you all very much for watching. If you found this video useful and enjoyed it, please let me know down below. Next time, you should have at least 12 liters in the trip. Oh. Next time, um, we're going to work on some of the tasks. Oh my god, you get 10,000? You get 10,000 for that? Wow, that's easy. So yes, thank you very much, and, uh, and goodbye.